Isaac Brown. He was the uh, coach for a year that turned into the coach of the year last year as Wichita State got to the NCAA tournament, won the regular season title. Starting lineups brought to you by Coca-Cola. Clark Kellogg, the two men in the middle, Craig Porter Jr. and Kyler Edwards, keys for both of those teams. No doubt about it because both of these guys can play the point. Porter Jr. is the primary point guard and the leading assist man for the Shockers coming off an ankle injury that has limited his practice time the last two stick Cougars. <laughs> you take a look at what they've lost in Mark and Sasser. There you see some series notes as well. We talked about the championship pedigree of these teams in the AAC. And so... Calvin Sampson is adjusting. They're going to play a lot more through Josh Carlson because he's such a force inside. This is Fabian White. And you got more with the turnaround on the first bucket, on the first bucket of the day. Nicely done that time. Calvin Sampson told us more may be the most athletic player he's coached in all of his years of coaching. And you saw that athleticism there and the quick turnover forced by the Cougars with that defensive pressure. They will turn you over, and oftentimes it leads to points. Good poise and patience here by Moore. Had his defender on his hip, took his time, and got right into a shot. Houston is very thin on the bench, obviously, with the two injuries. It's their third game in seven days. Wichita State on the other side. Just their second game in 16 days. Will it be rust for Wichita State? Will it be fatigue for Houston? Well, I know the players enjoy these games coming fast and furious because it cuts down practice time. Guys want to play, and there you see Shed playing some nice music right there. He was not a starter when this season began. As a starter, Houston is 9-1 and one with Shed leading the show. Shockers struggled to score in their last game, an 18-point loss to Memphis. Got to be patient, got to get the ball swung side to side, checking the air in it with too many dribbles. Not a way to attack this Houston defense. Dexter ducked out of bounds. It's going Houston's way. And Isaac Brown concerned about a start here, concerned about shooting. They had some open looks in that Memphis game, but they were 7 of 33 from distance. Yeah, and shot quality is so important. You can't shoot a good percentage if you're taking tough, challenge shots when you haven't moved the defense. Shockers are a pretty good defensive team themselves. Entry pass, Carlton. We'll see a lot of that. Well, the six-zip, Rich, and the Cougars have gotten every bucket in the paint, which is what they like to do. They're going to play inside out, and we've seen the different ways they do that. Posting up Carlson and Moore, and a drive by Shed. This is Etienne, Conference Player of the Year. Preseason cross-court pass picked by Shed. Blocked from behind, that's Porter, and it stays with Houston. Well, not the start you want if you're Isaac Brown. Not enough ball or player movement thus far, and that plays right into the hands of a very aggressive Houston defense. Nice job here by Porter to let Shed go by and then get that block late. Moore straight on. Bang. Wow. Look at this start. An 8-0 start for Houston. Well, like we talked about, you mentioned rust or fatigue. Players want to play, and they've got a really good high IQ as a team. So rest during this tough stretch of three games in seven days. A lot of film work has kept this Cougars team really sharp. Etienne pulling up, and a high arcing jumper, and Wichita State is on the board. Etienne last year averaged 20 a game in the two games against Houston. And this year on the road, he's averaging 20 points a game and struggling at home, and that was a tough shot. But they needed it to go down. And Wichita State seems to be a better team on the road right now. They've had a couple of real nice road wins this year at Missouri and at Oklahoma State. And and you I'm sorry, Rich. You mentioned how good they can be defensively. And that's an example of it there. But there's Carlton doing what Houston does, retrieving the miss. It's one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. 39% of the misses that Houston has, they retrieve. That's seventh best in the country. So your job has just started. You force the Cougars into a miss. That's about 40% of your work. 
the other 60% is getting that rebound. Of course, Udeze with his first foul. And an important defensive rebound for Wichita State. The Shockers last year, 16 and 6, 11 and 2, got to the NCAA tournament and lost to Drake. Udeze, Carlton, the transfer from UConn with the block. Well, I like the quick attack that time. They got it to Udeze in the middle of the floor, but Carlton did a nice job retreating, breaking contact, and then denying the shot attempt. He watched him get away from his body there and come up with the block late. Etienne averaging 15 a game. Porter. Those are the shots that Isaac Brown doesn't want. Exactly. Move the defense a little bit. That takes some discipline and some force. And that's a walk. He danced all over the place there. Desi, who's been pretty consistent as he's gotten by, but that time, just a little anxious. Third turnover. Kelvin Sampson's team was kind of a built on the outside with great guards and great three-point shooting, but he lost those two guards. Now, it's a it's a smash-mouth, pounded inside attack. And, you know, they really haven't had a guy like it to add to move his team forward. Somebody in the post that could finish and create problems in there and share taking advantage of penetration he's a gifted passer and he doesn't turn the ball over and he can score too that's the other thing is his as his minutes have expanded you've seen more and more of his game blossom particularly his offensive ability and he did not play much at all last year but he practiced against some outstanding yes. yards and there's Etienne I think he likes this building partner yes well look I mean he's the key Clearly if he's hot he's shot 31% so far from distance. He's a better three-point shooter than that Yeah, 39% for his career coming into this season in his first two seasons in Wichita State So we know he's capable again. I go back to the quality Carlton There's a nice save there by white kick out Very tender ankle. Yeah. they thought he'd be out for three weeks, but he came back and played against South Florida. Etienne, my goodness. That's an ambitious three. Very much so. And again, the shot quality is something to keep an eye on. And Wichita State, they've got two buckets from Etienne, but the quality of the shots has been subpar overall. And it's not sustainable in terms of competing if you don't get good shots. There's a good look. That's Joe Pleasant. The transfer from Abilene Christian. Of course, he was a, a big part of that upset over Texas. And the NCAA tournament hit the free throws at the end to win the game. He sure was. And how about this response by the Shockers? It was 8-zip right away. Houston get, having its way. And now the Shockers, high-character group, gritty, pretty good defensively, and now with a chance in transition. Pleasant couldn't catch it on the lob. And Houston gets a break. Fabian White back up the floor. Well, I think Etienne has to make that defender come to him more. Keep that dribble alive instead of looking for that home run opportunity. Edwards and a foul. Udeze battling with Carlton. Houston with a quick start. Wichita State on a 6-0 run and a two-point game in the American. Everything right and the little things are important and he holds his players accountable to those standards and expectations see when you lose key players it's next man up and we're going to continue to be who we are and do what we do ramon walker jr in the ball game has a more this is Edwards. I love what Edwards said. Hey, we're still Houston. We yeah. still have the best coach in the country. We are still good without those two guards. Edwards drives, kicks, good rotation. White's at three, and it's good. Big time play there. He's the best three-point shooter. From a percentage standpoint, that's his 19th make on the year, and he had only made a handful coming into this season, so he's really put the work in coming off of that torn ACL that cost him most of last season. Dexter Dennis, mid-range, 18 footer yeah taking advantage of the gamble there the defender took himself out of the play and gave Dennis a warm-up jumper why not white misses Kenny Pozo's in the ball game Morris Udeze 
The big for Wichita State is out with two fouls right now, and that's a key going against Carlton of Houston. This is Quay Grant, Division II transfer. Backup point guard who gets some really good minutes. Yes, he does, and he's a much better shooter than he's shown thus far this season. Double team, that's what Houston likes to do. And Poldo didn't handle it well. This is just good ball movement here. Make the extra pass. Good, better, best. Penetration, draw defenders, get it to the corner. That's a shot for more if he wanted it, but no. Fabian White Jr. had a better look and splashed it. Five turnovers for Wichita State. Has been a problem during this three-game losing streak. The last three losses, Wichita State has averaged 58 points a game, has shot 34% from the floor, and has turned it over 15 times a game. Let's see Isaac Brown in a defensive stance. That ball's off the foot of Edwards. And it goes to Wichita State. Of course, Wichita State last year, the interim coach, but in February he was named the head coach. Yeah. And his players loved it. I think a, a great credit to him that a lot of the veterans, you know, guys like Dennis, Udeze, Etienne, stayed and want to play for him. That's Poto, the true freshman, misses a three. He got a good looking shot from there, but you're right about Brown. He's really worked hard to establish quality relationships with his players, and that's just big boy basketball in the post that time by Josh Carlton. But Brown has done a really good job of trying to get guys to understand their roles, embrace those roles, and so far after a shaky start, the Shockers hanging in. A two-time first-team All-American. Houston's lead is back to five. White does a lot of things for a big man. He does. He put it on the floor some, mid-range jumper, has extended his range to the three, and there you see Carlton. Just too strong for the young Kenny Poto, who has size and length, but doesn't quite have the strength to handle Carlton in there by himself. Ten points in the paint right now for Houston. Uh, Wichita State needs to find some points. And they've got to try to get some attacks to the rim, too. They've settled for perimeter shots. There's a good look. you got to knock those down when you get them, though. Dennis misses. Yep. Rebound to White. Transition for Edwards. Yeah, that's a quality look that you need to splash for the Shockers. Carlton out of the double. You know, not a lot of teams are built to defend the post in college basketball these days. That will go as a, a missed opportunity and a rebounding foul by Houston. Right now, the Cougars, number 12 in the country, off to a fast start at home against Wounded in the paint. Not many teams around the country are built to defend it either. You're exactly right. The game has changed so much where it's all about spacing and three-point shooting and dribble drives, pick and roll, that there aren't many teams that have an emphasis on throwing the ball inside. You think about Houston, you think about a team like Purdue. Gonzaga does it with Drew Timmy, another force, tough shot. But a good steal by Grant to give the Shockers another chance. Stretch. That's Shed. And that's the sixth turnover. Houston will do that to you. And they'll turn it into points. Oh, nice look. Roberts kick corner. Beautiful. Ramon Walker Jr., who had surgery on that shooting hand in October. Calvin Sampson didn't know if he was going to have him, and he recovered much quicker than he thought. And his minutes have increased with the absence of Sasser and Mark. Good drive that time by Grant. And he's still adjusting to the speed at this level, but, but they really like him. They he's got, got a lot of game, Rich. And they got two years of him as well. Yeah, he's compact. Kind of a fire hydrant built, but he's got quickness and confidence and the ability to score off the dribble and from the three-point line. And as he adjusts, I think he could provide an awful lot of offense for this Shockers team down the road. Wichita State with a turnover, trying to break off of it. That's something that Isaac Brown really wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to go against the set Houston Cougars defense if you don't have to. It's tough to win games in the half court. It sure is, especially when you're not knocking down perimeter shots. Wednesday, the race is on. The amazing race is back with all new teams racing around the world to win a million dollars. Bill Kogan, our host, a new episode of Amazing Race, Wednesday, 9, 8 central on CBS.
Well, you know, you think about the games that Wichita State has lost. It hasn't necessarily been the defense. I mean, Memphis overpowered them with the size and length, and Memphis can do that. They're a unique team, very talented team. But the other games have been about the lack of offense for the Shockers. Defensively, they've competed for the most part. They've just got to tighten up this offensive end with more discipline, more patience, more ball movement, and a little more attacking the paint. Grant gets in tight again, stripped just before the shot clock expired. No, they're going to say it expired before the ball hit out of bounds. And a turnover on shot clock. Good active hands that time by the Cougars, but I like the penetration by Grant. I like the aggressiveness there, but clearly the deflection and a shot clock violation. A lot of turnovers by both teams right now. Yeah, Houston only averages 11 a game, so they're halfway there just about. Boy, good cross-court look that time. The zone action here the last couple of possessions by the Shockers. That's not his game right now, and that's a rebounding foul on Houston. And Roberts picks himself off the court. Eight-point lead. Yeah, Roberts the top rebounder for this Houston team, even though he only plays about 15 minutes a game, but he pursues that pumpkin, and there you see he just climbs the back. You know, Kelvin Sampson, when we visited with him yesterday, the, the question that he, he kind of asked himself is, how long can we play this thin in terms of bench in this environment? Because we're talking you know, not only about injuries, but also about illness yeah. throughout the college game. So far, they've been able to do it and, and play at a really high level. They won on the road at Temple. They won on the road at South Florida. This is their first home conference game. Oh, good job defensively that time by Edwards to move his feet and cut off Antien. Porter in tight. Oh, nice follow. Pleasant coming from the offside. Pleasant has five. Entry, White. Shed. Wichita State doing a little better job on the defensive boards. Jackson spinning. Left hand. Oh, degree of difficulty. High. Monzi. Oh, man, that was nice. You know, he goes by the nickname Monzi. I asked him, where did it come from? He says, I have no idea. There's something the family put on him and it's stuck and he prefers that to Clarence by the way Clarence Monzi Jackson yeah the sophomore yeah I know about those family nicknames my wife will drop one on you and it comes out of nowhere and it sticks shed again drive and kick Moore's three it's good Taze Moore Wichita State got themselves back within four Moore has seven this is Porter probing. Etienne rises. That was way off. And a rebounding foul on the Shockers. Nice job here by Monzi. Pirouetti to ecstasy. But the Cougars comfortably in front. Off the dribble, which has to please Isaac Brown at this point. Biggest lead has been 10 for Houston. Twice, Wichita State has made nice runs to get within three and within four, only to have Houston push it back to a seven-point lead. Off the press break, Porter, rebound ripped away. Nicely done. Council in the ball game for the Shockers. And Wichita State with the possession. Yeah, Council could be a key factor because of his ability to play downhill. Let's see if Wichita State gets a paint touch here off the dribble. There's one by Porter Jr. Tough shot. And he makes it. Yep, but he was under control. Played under both feet. And that's a good quality look. His first bucket. He doesn't score a lot of points, but he's their energy slash glue guy. Yeah, leads him in assist. Deceptively athletic for a point guard. He's matched up with Tajay Moore right now. Well, I like the way the Shockers get after you defensively. Shed, another floater. 
He likes to just get it up on the rim and let him go after the rebound. He's made a couple of them. Wichita State done a better job of getting into the paint. Their last four shots have gone down from the paint. That's a turnover. Good control here. Nice defense by Kyler Edwards. Stayed right there and challenged late. But that's just better offense that time. And that happens when you play from a solid base and you're under control. That's a tough shot, but that's a tough shot that you have a better chance of making because you're on balance. I don't think Wichita State can win this game with this amount of turnovers no. because they're, they're looking at over 20 if this pace continues. Agreed. Got to squeeze that orange if you're going to get fresh orange juice. That's a, that's a nice analogy for a morning start here in Houston. The shit kicks to Edwards. Boy, great ball movement. And White drills a three. His second. And Houston's lead stretches back to seven. Porter driving, Porter rising, and scoring. Boy, there's that athleticism I talked about. It's sneaky, but it's real. And that time, nice tight handle to get to the rim. When he's not in, things don't go well for Wichita State. They found that out against North Texas. Penetration, draw defenders, kick. And that's a step-in jump shot for Fabian White Jr. off the penetration from Edwards. And here's nice handle and keep that ball in front and tight. And then finish strong by Porter Jr. Edwards is fouled. You, you may have noticed on that shot and that replay by White, his toe was on the line. Good so call. It was a two and not a three. Yep, that was a deuce. Size uh, 14 or 15. Dexter Dennis picked up his second personal. You know, one factor here for Wichita State, Morris Udeze has been on the bench for a while with two fouls. And this is the uh, first free throw of the game. Well, you think about uh, Udeze, as you see, Edwards missed that free throw. Uh, Poto gives him a little more length, a little more height, and also a little more ability to spread the floor because of his shooting ability from the arc so it creates a little more driving lanes because Udesi has to stay pretty much in the paint area so in some ways it's uh, a little more favorable as far as the offensive attack for Wichita State Houston is a top 10 team in offensive and defensive efficiency Isaac Brown talked about how good they are on both sides of the ball but we just saw the Achilles heel for Kelvin Sampson's club and that's free throw shooting. They are last in the American in free throw shooting. Edwards just missed two. 66% is what the Cougars shoot from the line. Shed kick back to White. Driving and scoring. Boy, that's nice. Just attack that closeout. The closeout was poor. And White went right by his defender. And then that nice control to pull up for that floater. Fabian White. Evan right now. There's the shooting. Oh, Poto. I like this kid. That's, that's a pick and pop from 23. Yeah. I like his potential now. He's got to get stronger, but he moves well. You can see a nice shooting touch there. Seems like he understands where to be and how to play. He's got a nice upside. And he, Poto. He's having to lean on Carlton right now in the low blocks. Carlton, catch, will finish, but free throws. Houston Cougars, number 12 in the country. Inside, outside. You see from Isaac Brown's team. And the offensive execution has been spotty, but it's been a better. They've driven the ball a little more. They've gotten a couple of quality looks from the three-point line. Josh Carlton. Kelvin Sam faced him against UConn, liked his feet, liked his hands, mm -hmm. and always thought, you know, if, they, if he could be a dominant post guy if you used him that way. That's right, and, exactly. And now, all of a sudden, he has to use him that way. Yeah, it's a hand-in-glove fit. Carlton was looking to come to a winning program and have a chance to expand his role, and Calvin Sampson needed a guy who could provide what he does. 
Poto off the screen. Ricky Council Jr. He can get to the rim. Porter. Carlton cut him off. That's tough. Over Carlton. That's the second time in the paint for Porter Jr. Yeah, Isaac Brown was telling his players they need to pump fake a little more, but that time Porter Jr. almost pump fake himself out of a shot. But he was still able to get it up and down because he had a shot before that last pump fake. Jamal Shea, you can see Carlton in low blocks against Poto, and he just muscles right by him and scores. Well, Wichita State was trying to double him, but the guy on the wing didn't get himself in good position, and that left Carlton one-on-one, -on -one. and again, he's just too strong right now for Kenny Poto. I think Poto may have to break contact and try to use his length. Poto the miss. Nice rebound by Monzi Jackson. And he's getting to the free throw line. AT&T at the half is coming up. Adam Zucker, Steve Lapis, Seth Davis will break down the first half, catch up on all the news and the early highlights of a busy college basketball day. It's coming up AT&T at the half. Texas at Oklahoma State and Colorado State. If you haven't seen them yet, Woo! David Roddy. They can play Isaiah Stevens. They will be David Roddy and those guys are tough at San Diego State playing in front of the show And that's a good one. That's the final game of our triple header two guards Marcus Sasser Tremont Mark He has stepped in he's running this team and they just keep on winning I'll tell you what Isaac Brown said the feed list is compete We have to compete and they have done that started slow down a zip but from that point on the fight has been there for the Shockers. Now it comes down to how sharp can you be in your execution at both ends. They've been pretty solid at this end. Ramon Walker Jr. the miss. Offensive rebound, and Walker loses it. Oh, was tipped. <laughs> and Houston's going to get the ball back. Here's another look. Yep, they should yep. get it back. They did. Because it looked like Council got it last. Taze Moore straight on. Boy, how good has he been? Has he missed the shot? He's got nine. Yeah, he hasn't. I'm looking to see. He hasn't missed a shot. He only averages six a game. Poto kicks it back out. Long three. Straight on. Missed by Jackson at the end. Hodo kept it alive though, tapped it out. Good job by the young fella. Let's see if Council can get going. Maybe not with shots like that. It was a long three. And again, Isaac Brown off the miss. Fabian White. He's got nine. Houston with a run and a seven point lead. I'm the latest hashtag champ. Really playing well this year. He's been terrific. He's a veteran player. He's got good skill. And he's hungry. I mean, he missed a good portion of last season coming back from that ACL. When the game is taken away from you, Rich, and you get a chance to come back and be healthy, you've got an urgency and an appreciation that you can't manufacture. Hodo, and that's nicely done by Isaac Brown, out of the timeout to get a look like that. And Wichita State back within five. Edwards, long on the three. Man, teams are crashing the boards right now. And that's going Wichita State's way. Boy, both Porter Jr. and Etienne went way upstairs to try to come up with that. Bodies colliding here, going after that pumpkin. And it looked like Walker Jr. may have gotten the last touch. And he got oops upside the head, too, there. Houston had five offensive rebounds in the first two minutes of their last game. And I was hard and he's fouled. Should be 65 to 70 percent attacks to the rim like this. And then 25. And that's a good aggressive take that time by Council. Thursday, a new episode of the number one new comedy, Ghosts. See why critics can't stop raving, calling it drop dead funny. Wildly amusing and thoroughly charming. Ghosts catch a brand new episode this Thursday, 9, 8 central here on CBS. Final seconds, first half. And again, every time Kelvin Sampson's team makes a run, 
Wichita State draw. Yeah, hit a bit of a speed bump, but you know they've got a dynamic team. And the net rankings, which sort of mirror the selection committee's rankings, are much kinder to the, to the Cougars than the uh, AP poll. They are number three in the net and number 12 in the AP. All right, let's see if the final possession for Houston here pans out. Home defense here by Wichita State. You need to attack now if you're Houston to give yourself a chance for a second shot, unless you just want to take the last shot for sure. Chet off a ball screen. Carlton rolls. Reverse Carlton with a tip. How Houston is that? Very much so. Well said, partner. A dominant offensive rebounding team. Well, who's your Who's your guy? Who's your favorite on that team? If you force me at gunpoint to just pick one, no firearms allowed. Yeah, but I know, understood. But I would probably lean Hakeem with Drexler right there. He was special. And Otis was as good a scorer as you could find. But if you made me pick one, I'd have to hang my hat on uh, on Hakeem. Even when you drive by the old Astrodome, you think about Elvin Hayes and that matchup yeah. against that great UCLA team. All right, Houston has the first touch. Moore, spinner, he still hasn't missed a shot. Wow. Taze Morris, 5 of 5 from the field. And Houston's lead runs back to 7. And he started the game with a little mid-post action. Desi back on the floor for Wichita State after only playing a few minutes in that first half. Six minutes because of the two fouls. Etienne certainly is a marked man right now for every defense he faces. That's a contested three. Udeze with a rebound, and he's fouled. He'll get free throws. Taze Moore, a transfer from Cal State Bakersfield. Yeah, he got a post up to start the game. This time he just goes one-on-one -on -one isolation against Joe Pleasant and makes a tough against-his-body spin move. There you see him going the other way into that left hand. That's just a tough shot. Kelvin Sampson played eight in the first half. That's pretty much all he's got. That's the max. That is the max. Very fragile in terms of if anything else goes wrong personnel-wise. Shockers really could use a nice half from Udeze with the two fouls. He really wasn't a factor. He played just six minutes. Took one shot, but he has really improved from the free throw line. He was mid 40s his first couple of years from the strike. He's up over 70 percent this season, a testament to his hard work and becoming more reliable and proficient from the line. Ball movement was key for Houston. First half, 16 made buckets, 11 assists. The other night they made 30 baskets and had 21 assists. Anytime you're up over 60 percent assist to field goal ratio. Across the there it is. He just got another toe that cost him on a three-point shot too that's earlier in the, in the first half. That's been an active toe today. <laughs> yeah. Houston's defense can be suffocating. They are one of the nation's best. Ken Palm has him in a top ten in defensive efficiency and in offensive efficiency. Etienne by himself. Carlton swats it away. Houston on the move. More up the floor. Well, I really think that's where Etienne has to trust his teammates. That's an offensive foul. Easy call. Lowered the shoulder. Good position by Pleasant. But, boy, Etienne, when he attacks, he has to be thinking about drawing defenders and kicking it to teammates. Here you take a look at this play. And great job by you, Desi. And that's an easy one, as I said. Can't lower your shoulder into a guy and not get called for it. Carlton got his money's worth. Yeah, he did. He gave, he gave him a good he, – he felt him on that one. Pleasant felt him on that one. Wichita State searching for offense. He had a lot of points in the paint late in that first half. Porter did a nice job. That's sent right down in the stands and guard their men. They typically don't get beat. You don't beat guys at the point of attack with the Cougars. And that really fortifies the whole team's defense. Moore strips it away. Shed with a five point lead. Just underway, second half. Carlton in the post. Shed rotates it. Beautiful. White corner. 
That's a three. That's what happens when you get it out of that double team in the post and get it to the opposite side. Houston has done that a couple of times really well. He saw those points off turnovers, 17 to nothing in favor of Houston. And that can't continue if you're Wichita. Move it. One more. Hot potato. Good, better, best. Take it out of the net. AT&T is America's most reliable 5G network, so now you'll never miss them. Wichita State have come back to close. And right now, Houston's on a 7-2 run to start things in the second half. Off the timeout. Tyson Etienne has had a, a tough day here today. Just two buckets. Leading score, one of the conference best players. That's out of bounds. And it's going to stay with Wichita State for just two seconds on the shot clock. Yep, not a lot of time and good defense by Houston to corral Dennis on the penetration. This is where you got to set a solid screen and be sharp with your pass. You can't waste anything here if you're Wichita State. And there's not much movement. Tough shot here. Ooh, that's mm -hmm. shot. Carlton blocks it. Yeah. Well, this is what Houston did to USF the other night. I think it was Wednesday when they came out of the locker room in that second half and really put the hammer down. And they do it with solid defense and then really good, sharp execution on offense. White open. Oh, goodness. Not expected. But that's the biggest lead for Houston now. A banked in three. It's 11. And this end of the floor, the Shockers have yet to get anything going in the second half. Porter. Good switch there. Desi was open for an instant. Dennis knocks down a three. Boy, good answer. Big answer. Timely answer for Wichita State. Much needed. Wichita State has had some three-quarter court and some half-court pressure. Yeah, they've mixed defense as well. White. This one is short. It's the end. It stays with Wichita State. Well, Fabian White has improved his three-point shooting, and this time fortuitous as it goes off the glass. He is happy that it went in, but wasn't planning on that. And then this is just good ball movement. See the late rotation? Good sharp pass, and those are the kind of shots that are quality shots. See, Wichita State, it's about QQM. Quality, quantity, and mix of shots. The quality has lacked other than a few segments here today, and that's been the case in all three of the recent losses. Well, keep an eye on that. The Shockers trying to shoot their way back in this. 44-36, Houston. Verizon is going ultra, and so is our best unlimited plan. Okay. Yeah. And Houston right now has 13 assists to go with 19 made baskets. Well, that's a heck of a ratio, but you, it just doesn't happen now. You got to knock down shots, but going back to what I started to talk about, QQM, quality, quantity, and mix. How many shots are you getting at the rim? How many are you getting mid-range? How much are you getting to the free throw line? And what is the quality and number of your shots? That's where Wichita State has struggled mightily, and another turnover doesn't help the case either. Quay Grant turns it over and shit goes coast to coast. Back to double digits for Houston. Now you got to settle it down. Clay Grant has to get his team a quality shot with ball movement and penetration. Pleasant misses the three. Rushed it just a touch. White over Pleasant. Offensive foul. Oh, Calvin Sampson is going crazy. And so are the fans here. Good effort by Joe Pleasant, but I tend to lean towards the offensive foot backpedaling to get into legal guarding position. Yeah, he jumped right into him. That's what I mean. It's so hard in transition for a defender to be in legal guarding position on the move. So I think they, they why well, no, they missed that one. That was clearly a block. Third personal on Fabian White. Let's see if it changes some momentum here. Because Wichita State needs a shift. 
play. The defense has just been terrific. Suffocating. Dexter. Dennis! That's another three and a big one. Well, so far, the Shockers have done enough to stay close, but unless they tighten things up considerably, it won't be enough to win. Oh, shed to Carlton. And one. This inside-outside game they got going is really sweet. Yeah, it's impressing you and the Rich. I mean, they do a really good job. Quick attack after the May 3. Wichita State a little slow matching up and tagging people, and Houston makes them pay. I'd be interested to see an opponent's scouting report of Houston from a month ago <laughs> compared to the one coming into this game. Yeah, they're changing as we go. And out of necessity, necessity is the mother of invention. Because of Sasser and Mark being out with season-ending injuries, Calvin Sampson, his staff, and this team are rebuilding and remaking themselves on the fly. Somewhat. Yeah. Got two road wins to start conference play. Udeze got it up and in. Boy, got his body into Carlton nicely that time to get it up and over him. And these Shockers just will not go completely away. A credit to the character of this group that Isaac Brown talked to us about yesterday. Jet driving. That's a foul, and it's a late whistle. You could hear it all the way from half court. <laughs> Here you go. Take a look at this penetration by Udesi. Did a nice job again. Got his body into Carlton. Negated his ability to lift for the shot block, and then just got a little bit of the arm there on Carlton. Did actually Roberts is at the free throw line, and Udesi. I think Brown's got to leave him out there. I don't know that he has a choice That's right, right now. Yep. I mean, Houston is absolutely dominating inside, much like they did on the road at South Florida. Because it's not just Carlton, but the guy at the free throw line, mm -hmm. Juwan Roberts, is one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. He's averaging over three offensive rebounds a game. Yeah, in 17 minutes a game, which is crazy. Well, we see that Kenny Poto has come in. He actually gave Isaac Brown some good minutes and creates a little different dynamic offensively for Wichita State. Grant. Jackson had to retrieve the pass. Etienne draws two. Away for the ball screen. Oh, he's got to move it. There you go. Grant the catch. Nice corner pass. That's nicely done. And Clarence Jackson hits the three. And it, that happens because FTN gets rid of it out of the double team, and then you put Houston in rotation. Edwards catch and shoot. It's a good box out. Dennis. Wichita State. Beaten by Memphis at home. And a steal. Shed takes it away. Edwards. Grant returns to knock it out of bounds. Etienne a little sloppy with it, but he does get it out of the double team. And now Houston's in rotation. Grant Pennant. Good hustle defensively here by Grant after he gave it up. Shed just stays in your jersey. He doesn't give you any breathing room when you're handling that ball and he's defending you. And he was nowhere near the player he is now last year. That's a foul, Pozo. I was talking to Hollis Price, one of the assistants for Houston prior to the game, played for Kelvin Sampson and was part of an Elite Eight and Final Four team during his time at Oklahoma. But he mentioned how Jamal Shedd has really grabbed the reins of the point guard spot once he got the opportunity to be a starter. That is a, a, a coaching staff that knows that man quite well. The man to his right certainly does. Mm -hmm. Kellen Sampson, his son. You've got Qantas White. You've got Casey Beard. And, of course, uh, Kelvin's daughter, Lauren, is part of the uh, yeah. basketball staff and an integral part as well. I don't know that his son's going to be here much longer, though. That, well, he's a head coach in waiting. There's no doubt about it. It's just a matter of when, not if. No foul. It's the end. Dennis, good shot fake. Carlton sucks up the rebound.
nine point Houston lead. Taze Moore has been brilliant. Taze Moore with a left hand. He's not missed a shot. He's six of six. And he's shown it to us from every level. Right at the rim, a three, mid range post up. Having some kind of day is Tajay Moore. Biggest lead of the ball game for number 12, Houston, on top of Wichita State. That's a pretty tight spot. Watch this. Again, dance him, dance him, cross him up, drop him off. And he's having some kind of day. Tajay Moore can't do it much better than that. I mean, they lost 28 points combined and great three-point shooting from those two guards who are out, Sasser and Mark. Sasser in particular is, is really missed. 45 threes. That's a steal. Walker, and he's blocked from behind. No whistle. Balls out of bounds. Boy, how about the Houston. effort by Dexter Dennis? That looked like a clear breakaway, an easy one for Walker Jr. Actually, it was Craig Porter Jr. I'm sorry. He did not give up on this. I don't think he even touched it. Oh, there's a bump right there. Yeah, he could have been called for a foul with the underneath left arm. Didn't really make a play on the ball. That was one that Walker should have finished. If you're just joining us, Houston playing without two of their best players. They'll be out for the rest of the year. Two guards. They've changed their offense, and they keep on winning. Edwards has to launch in a late clock spot. And the rebound of Clarence Jackson of Wichita State. Porter finds Poto, blocks, foul. Roberts protests. <laughs> Maybe too much. <laughs> they gave him a little rope there because he certainly got a lot of the ball. Good job by Poto to run. Good luck by Porter Jr. Pump fake. One guy parachuters club. And there's a oh, pretty good play up top. Yeah. In that case, the hand can be is, is part of the ball, but maybe a little brush underneath. CBS Tuesdays from executive producer Dick Wolf. These elite teams prove that justice has no borders. First, FBI, then FBI International. Finishing the night with FBI Most Wanted. Three unstoppable teams all on one night. The FBI's and Tuesday. 8, 7 Central on CBS. Can Wichita State muster up enough efficiency on offense to really put some pressure on the Cougars? That'll be the question over the next 11 minutes. They've had fits and starts and have maintained contact, but not enough to overcome this comfort zone for Houston. Shed against Porter. It's a good matchup. And Shed a rolling hook. He was kind of the third guard, and then those two guys went down, Sasser and Mark, and suddenly Shed is like the focal point. He's the, the captain out there who runs things. And I can't overstate it enough. He's embraced the opportunity. He seized it. Sometimes players shy away from it, but he's actually relished the chance and has taken on the responsibility of being a leader and producing at a high level. And that's a credit to that young man and this coaching staff. They do a great job with player development, keeping guys ready. And his opportunity is now, and he's making the most of it. Porter's bumps. That was on his way to the bucket. It's a little bit of old school here, Rich. You don't see many guys shoot the little soft hook. That was a kind of a half hook. But still a nice shot for a little fella to have in his in his quiver. Once he entered the starting lineup, he's gone 65 assists to just 18 turnovers. Yeah. And the team has gone 9-1. and one. Those are impressive numbers, especially that assist to turnover ratio. Caught the Cougars napping right there. That's not going to make <laughs> Kelvin or Kellen Sampson very happy. Back to 10. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. More from Shed. Boy, Shed did such a great job there, keeping that dribble alive and... He wanted that cut initially, it wasn't there, and then he kept the ball alive until it was there. And an excellent, uh, takes a hard step out to really get that defender leaning, and then pushes off, and now it's history. And that's the difference in the game, Rich. There's a team in Houston executing at a high level, taking care of the ball, quality shots for the most part. 
Wichita State playing hard, competing, grinding, but not efficient. Turnovers, missed shots, tough shots. That's the difference in the score now. And that's the thing that's going to make Houston really tough to beat. And, you know, even Isaac Brown talked about the efficiency. And, and Kelvin Sampson reinforced it when we talked to him yesterday. He said, the little things, the Always. little things matter with us. And that's what's getting us through this. Because it's not pretty, but they're just so ultra efficient on both sides. Yep. Nice pass. Carlson. Poto got the block. Carlton was fouled. Eighth season here. When he arrived, this building was in tatters. The program kind of in the same shape. Mm -hmm. And this place, $60 million renovation is just absolutely gorgeous. It opened again in 2018. And, of course, the Cougars get into the Final Four last year. Let everybody know that they are all the way back. There's a lot of things happening in this basketball team. They're headed to the Big 12 in a couple of years. A lot of upward momentum. And this program is on solid ground, particularly this basketball program. Top 15 in the country. And Kelvin has built it from the ground up his way with standards, expectations, and accountability as major pillars. Shot clock down, and man. Late clock in the lane. Porter's been terrific today. He hits another one. He's sneaky athletic. He's longer than he looks, and he got lost celebrating his made basket. And it was at the half court. I don't know. They were talking about something, and that allowed Kyle, Kyler Edwards to walk into a warm-up jumper. I like that, the warm-up jumper. Yeah, that was all, that's all that was. Nobody around him. Etienne. He's had to force everything he's taken. And some of that is self-induced, as you see Houston taking full advantage. Another example of a bad shot being the first pass to the other team's fast break. Shed to Carlton. Get used to it. Seven assists for Shed. Carlton is cruising with 19. And Houston. I'll tell you, they're a fun team to watch. Because, as you mentioned, they're not pretty, but they're really because of how hard they play, how well they play both ends. They share the ball. They take care of it. And the talent is underrated here. Oftentimes, because guys don't have a certain number of stars next to their name as recruits, people equate that with production. Well, Calvin knows what kind of players he wants, and he's able to recruit them, develop them, and they actually are always a little bit, I think, underrated from a talent standpoint. He, he said something interesting this week. He says, I don't evaluate this team like the other team. That other team was 11-2. and two. This team is 2-0, and oh, and we're going to figure it out <laughs> yeah, as we go. That's a good line. Etienne, late clock. That's another three that... You just don't like if you're Isaac Brown, but shot clock necessity. Lead at 15. Carlton. <laughs> That's the second time he's bulldozed Udeze. This is all Houston. The Cougars making it happen. Been a struggle for the Shockers. When it's game time, every lefty going to work today. Wichita State has played against two really good defenses their last two games. Memphis is a team that switches one through five. And that really forced them into a bad shooting night. And this has been a nightmare here against Houston. Turnovers and points off of those turnovers. Dennis in, kicks. Shot clock's down again. Porter... Ball didn't hit the rim, and Udeze gets it up and in and beats the clock. You see the difference there? The ball moves, gets side to side. You get a dribble penetration. You get a shot attempt in the in the lane. Even though it's challenged, you compress the defense. Now you have a chance to get an offensive rebound, and that was out of a timeout. So you know that was a call play by Isaac Brown, and his team executed and got something good. That's the strength of Wichita State. They have the ability to get guys to the rim. Mm -hmm. Guys like Dennis and Porter. Yeah. The council. 
First miss for Tajay Moore. Pretty good defense that time. Now let's see if Wichita State can show the same kind of discipline. Get that ball swung and attack. There's Dennis getting to the rim. And with a flush, a spark of life for the Shockers. Well, you know, it's not complicated, Rich. It's just not easy. There's a level of discipline you have to have in how you become efficient offensively. We've seen it by the Cougars. Penetration, pitch, that's a good-looking shot. Edwards misses. Uh, just a voracious offensive rebounder is Carlton. And he walks. Yeah, he did. He did. Good effort to get to the offensive board. But then he traveled when he got it. Ball moving space now. Pump fake. Dribble drive. Play off two feet. Drive the close out. Get a shot up on the glass. Defenses, defenders are scrambling. And now you got lane to the offensive rebound. Here you see another get the ball to the wing. Push it back to the middle. And now you've got a chance with the defense moving to attack. There's still plenty of time if Wichita State can keep this run going. Udeze gets by, and Carlton with the foul. And Udeze, as Clark pointed out, has improved himself at the line, and he gets there again. Good take here. He got his shoulder by Carlton. There wasn't a ton of contact. That's his third foul, though. And just what you want if you're Wichita State. The more you can try to chip away at this deficit with the clock stop, the better. Wichita State this year is not shooting well from the field or from distance, but Isaac Brown's team makes their free throw 72%. Mm -hmm. And this guy's really improved. He leads them and made free throws and attempts. And as we indicated, mid 40% career free throw shooter until this year. And is up over 70%. One of two there. Lead is 10. Houston number 12. In the AP poll, number three in the net. Baylor's number one, Arizona's number two in the net. Houston number three. Edwards curls off the screen. Malta got the tip. It's out of bounds. And there's a foul on Moore. Taze Moore with the foul. Kelvin Sampson. Five forty-two left, and the Shockers get another opportunity to shave something off the deficit with the clock stop. As Houston in the penalty. This is a guy that, that Isaac Brown is hopeful can give them an offensive spark as the season goes along. Ricky Council Jr. Well, he certainly has the ability. I mean, he's got excellent size, good explosiveness. Pretty good ball skill. Many coaches are using that now because he played last year as a freshman with the extra year. is essentially a freshman again this year. Look at Moore blown up the floor. Look at Moore with the left hand. It wouldn't roll. And Wichita State has a rebound and momentum and a 7-0 run. Council cut off. Need to make sure you get a good shot here. Udez a spinning against Carlton. Blocked by Carlton. Council with the putback, and here come the Shockers. How about the fight of this Wichita State Shockers team? I tell you, that is really impressive. They've not been efficient. They've turned it over before. The fight and the competitiveness fully on display, and it has them back in the game. I mean, it's a three-possession game now. Rim, but there's Council. So, again, doing the work inside. That's what we call dine-in eating. More. Houston's done a really nice job of handling pressure in this one. Back in the hands of Jamal Shedd, the sophomore. Last year averages two points a game in about ten minutes a game. Let's see what Houston comes up with now. Shedd drives. Missed it. Ball's tipped out of bounds. It's Wichita State ball. And the Shockers have a chance to add to this 9-0 run. He's not yelling at the officials right now. He's on his ball club. Yeah. Six straight missed shots for Houston. Crowd growing restless. Dennis the three. Edwards the rebound. Like that look though. Quick hit. He had space and time. Shed weaves his way in. This is tech. 
Rising. In and out. Carlton had it. It's going to stay with Houston. And there's going to be a foul. And Carlton is down right now. Fifteen foul. That's one of the concerns Kelvin Sampson has because they are so lean with personnel. He says they're a tweaked ankle or any kind of injury away from really being in a bad way. And that's affected the way they practice. Yeah, clearly. And they're a built. So they have to do a lot of um, mental work and breakdown work. Not much five on five stuff with the short numbers that he has. Carlson turns and faces, finds Moore, up with a three. It's good look, though, and really nice find by Carlson. Shed. Count it. Well, sometimes you got to make your own breaks. Pilfer there by Shed on a pretty casual. He's always been a close friend. Was an assistant coach when Brown played a year at Texas A&M. It's great to see Billy Kennedy back on the sideline. He's a, a been a mentor to Brown throughout. He had a great run as a Texas A&M coach. Very inspirational guy because that run at Texas A&M came after he was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. One of the great guys in the coaching profession in college basketball, Billy Kennedy. Udeze going to work. Doesn't get the roll. And Houston has the rebound. Well, the Shockers have cut a 15-point deficit to six with the ball. A turnover and steal and hoop by Shed, and now it's back to eight with the clock starting to work more against Wichita State. Shockers have held their own on the boards here. They're actually plus two in rebounding. Shed, late clock, floater. Uh-uh. Carlton! Unbelievable. Eight offensive rebounds. 21 points. Nine total rebounds. He's a real man in there, boy. I tell you, penetration by Shed. He doesn't get the floater to go, but there's Carlton doing that dirty work on the weak side. Angling himself in there, muscling in between guys, and then getting it up and down. Well, that's a tremendous asset to have, a big guy that you can throw it to for points. And he'll go get it himself sometimes when he needs to. Udeze is fouled out. And Houston withstands the run and stretches it back to 11. And he put those back in. That's the end drives. He's fouled. And he's going to get to the line. Well, I tell you, he's got the ability to make some tough shots. If he can just tamp down his efficiency a bit, trust his teammates a little more, get rid of it some, and play off of it a little more, I think he got a chance to ha still have a terrific season. How much of this for him that somewhat of a struggle is the fact that he's a marked man after a, a great year last year? Great point. Terrific point. Isaac Brown talked about that. When you move to the top of the other team's scouting report, that changes things in terms of how you're going to be defended how you have to change and modify your game and understand what's happening, how you have to use that attention to help your team by moving the ball and trusting them. And he's he's growing into that. He's shown flashes, but he has to continue to make progress in being able to play more ways than just trying to go one-on-one. Carlton's -on -one. unbelievable, even though that one bounces away. He's got his double-double now with that rebound. 22 points. He may actually get two rebounds on that because he controlled the tip <laughs> then missed the shot. But they're going to give him just one. <laughs> so he's 22 and 10. There's another double-double for the big man. And Wichita State not out of this. They got back into it attacking the paint. Pleasant. Carlton's lurking. Dennis thought about a three. Now he drives. That's a wild shot. Yeah, the tough one. 11 rebounds for Carlton. Houston in control, approaching the two-minute mark. Edwards. 
the tip. That's more. Edwards is down, and everybody here holding their breath yeah. because he turned his ankle badly. Came back after missing just the one game because they didn't have anybody else. Yeah, credit to that young man's toughness and leadership that he was able to get himself back out there. He thought he got fouled there. You can see the exasperated look. But I don't think he re-injured himself. He looks like he's fine. Lead is 10, under two. Porter driving, kicking. A nifty move. Etienne Roberts over the top, got the rebound. No whistle. Play on. Shed. I bet you a lot of coaches when Houston lost their two guards thought to themselves, well, maybe they'll be vulnerable. Got news for you. <laughs> They're 3-0, and including this one. I know they're 10 up with a minute and a half left. If they win this, they'll be 3 0 without those two guys. And man, they have looked good. Well, we've got a call play. I imagine that Houston will look to max out this last 15 seconds on the shot clock. This is more. Ramon Walker's had some nice minutes. Shed, shot clock down, three on the way. Missed, oh yes. Of course, Carlton had the rebound though, stripped away. Council up the floor. Council draws contact and gets to the line with a minute two left. Yeah, good job by Ricky Council there. Knew he had the smaller Jamal Shed on him and did not settle. Backed him down and got right inside to draw the foul. People wanted to carry there, but it's just a high dribble. As long as your hand's on top of the ball, you can dribble it to the ceiling. Council's first one is good. Juwan Roberts back in. That man... 12 rebounds, 10 of them offensive rebounds. And a teaching moment with his head coach. Wichita State not done yet. Eight point game. More up the floor. Tough to pry the ball from this guy. Shed against Jackson. Gets by him. Keeps the ball. Lobbed it, and nobody was there. And a costly turnover for Houston. Leaves it just a, a crack in the door for Wichita State. Etienne. Whoa, nice move in a bucket, a quick bucket. And that's exactly what you want. Now you give yourself some pressing time, and then you maybe foul. You got a foul now. Try to extend this game. Got a foul. So you needed to score so you could have a chance to. Boy, they wasted a lot of time there. I mean, after they got that quick score, there was 40 seconds left on the clock. If you don't get a steal right away, you foul quickly to see if you can max it out and get some misses, especially because Houston, not a great free throw shoot. But boy, they lost a number of seconds by not fouling right away. Remember, Houston's not a good free throw shooting. Exactly, team. my point. Yeah. Last in the American. Although this guy is five of six. Throw. Wichita State, get it in and attack. Try to get something at the rim. A quick score. Set up your pressure and then foul if you don't get something. But you got to score first and you got to go quick. Cougars, nine of them. Need quick points. Dennis on the cut. Blocked. No foul. Clean block. Now a foul. Under 20. That's been the case pretty much all game long, Rich. Wichita State showing you glimpses. Doing enough to stay competitive and keep it interesting as we take a look at Dexter Dennis. Nice cut. Boy, that could have been a foul there on Roberts. He got some arm. Kyler Edwards 
Back at the line. Free throw is good. Kelvin Sampson had some transfers come in. Edwards was one of those. He said something interesting. He said, you know, just because you take a great play, and he said Edwards has absolutely been the right fit because he's bought in to the culture, bought into the system. Yep. Etienne misses the three. Houston with the ball. Houston with the lead. And Houston is 3-0 in the American. Despite their losses, Kelvin Sampson has made the adjustments and the Cougars with a big win. For Clark Kellogg, our entire crew, I'm Rich Waltz from Houston. Coming up, game two, number 14, Texas and Oklahoma State. We'll send you back to Adam Zucker and company, our New York studio. Inside College Basketball presents